Hon Klau Stil Yeah Hun har lyst og Hun har lyst Hello friends, my name is Ari Thurger and today I'm going to talk about Frigg, the Queen of Asgard and Odin's wife. By the way, I hope you have enjoyed the introduction that was me <laughs> singing, most likely making your ears bleed. If you enjoy it, let me know in the comments below. I have in mind a couple of melodies for other introductions, but if you think it's just terrible, please stop me. Otherwise, I assume you have enjoyed it. Another thing uh, before we start this video. You know that I have made a couple of videos about cats in the spiritual and religious context of Northern Europe. As a form of honoring my cat, Mr. Tico, who passed away early this year. Well, today this video is in honor of my grandmother, who also passed away recently. Yes, this here is a total disgrace for me. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this video and let's get started. Frigg is the main goddess of the Aesir in Norse mythology, and her residence in Hosgard is Thensali. She's often known as being Odin's wife, and not much is said about her and her attributes. In truth, in the surviving sources, little is said about her at all, other than being the queen of Asgard due to her marriage with Odin. But Frigg is the oldest continually known Germanic goddess, just like Freya. In fact, the two goddesses are the same and only became two separated deities during the Viking Age. But on that point I will focus much more on the next video. But it's a fact that must be underlined because the lack of information of Frigg is due to the fact of this deity being Freya and when the same goddess was divided in two, it was in a time too late to develop complex attributes to the goddess and so Frigg remained a deity shrouded in mystery. Frigg in Old Norse means beloved, and indeed she is associated with love. To the Old Saxons she was known as Fri, in Old High German Freya, and thus, by the contact the Romans had with these Germanic peoples, the goddess was identified as Venus, the Roman goddess of love, which is perfectly comprehensible because Frigg's name derives from the Proto-Germanic Freo, from the Indo-European Freya, which means beloved. Frigg starts to be recorded as Odin's wife in sources dating from the 8th century onward. She wasn't Odin's wife before such mythological records, but both deities started to be linked to one another in the history of the Lombards, which is a 8th century myth explaining the foundations of the Lombard people, where Odin and Frigg appear as Godan and Freya, and both are engaged in a dispute over whom to favor in war. There were two tribes at war against each other, the Winili, who were Frigg's favorites, and the Vandals, Odin's favorites. The Winili won Frigg's favorites. These are the Lombards, or Longobards, Longbeards. This is an interesting account because these Lombards are the same Longobardi the Romans came in contact with, a Germanic tribe devoted to the earth goddess Nerthos, which has loads of similarities with the goddess Freya, therefore with the goddess Frigg. Both Nerthos and Freya slash Frigg had the same similarities even in the cults to these deities, priests of the opposite sex of that of the goddess driving a cart across the country with the representation of the goddess reaching the sacred groves or bogs to sacrifice people in the name of the goddess for fertility and prosperity. 
a huge ceremonial procession, so important and with such proportions that it was impossible to pass unnoticed in the eyes of the Romans, and they recorded it. Of course, the name Nerthos is the Latin equivalent of Njord, who is the Norse god father of both Freya and Freyr, but no problem in that. This Germanic deity, Nerthos, is either a forgotten sister wife of Njord, or Njord itself in Central Europe was a deity with both genders. Which, which isn't strange, there are many deities having both genders, and Aphrodite, gods. But Nerthos and Njord may well be a divine pair, just like their children, Freya and Freyr. And indeed, the Lombards worship this Nerthos, which to them wasn't called Nerthos, it was called Godan's wife, Freya, which is the same thing as Odin's wife, Frigg. So we are talking about the same deity, only with different names in different cultures and also different names amongst Germanic tribes. Suffice it to say, Frigg in early Germanic religion was the equivalent of the Mother Earth, associated with both fertility and plenty, the sustaining force of the Earth, but with a particular trait. She was a goddess who intervened in human affairs, and that's an important trait, as you will see. In this story of the Lombards, the myth behind it, it is said that Gordon watches the occurrences of the world through his window, along with his wife Freya. Not just this account, but the way they behave towards one another demonstrates that both Gordon and Freya appear with the same recognizable attributes and personality traits of Odin and Frigg in later Icelandic sources. Odin watches the world through Litskjalf, Odin's throne, and the Icelandic accounts tell us of both Odin and Frigg being there together, watching over the world in disputes, both standing on the opposite side of a dispute, waging, uh, one taking one position and the other the complete opposite one just like in the account of the Lombards, Frigg for one tribe and Odin for another. In both sources, Odin and Frigg are depicted as a divine couple actively involved in human affairs. Odin grants victory to those he favors, but he and his wife disagree over their own favorites and Frigg ends up gaining the game. Today, this might seem a little bit strange to our social thinking, unfortunately, uh, how can the queen turn the king's mind, or how can the wife of the chieftain be responsible for something greater than, than her own husband, the man? A woman with more power than a man, or outwit the king of the gods, a male power in heavens? That's indeed strange. Well, it's not that strange at all, because with the advent of Christianity, we became used to a patriarchal society. God himself was male, Jesus was male, and the apostles were all dudes. In the Bible, the only woman who is praised is the Virgin Mary, because she gave birth to the Savior, a male Messiah, and she was just a vessel to carry God's Son. The other women are either prostitutes who are stoned to death, or Eve who done goofed and doomed us all, and other women who somehow became demons for thinking for themselves. Or, of course, Mary Madeleine, who has been attested by the Church as a prostitute for 2,000 years. But she, in fact, historically speaking, this is true, she actually was a wealthy woman, great supporter of Jesus and his ideas, who actually supported his religious campaign with actual money. She was financing the entire thing. Well, this little critic just to tell you that it isn't abnormal the idea of a goddess either being on the same level as a god, a male god, or even being more powerful than him. For thousands of years, people uh, before the coming of Christianity or other religious patriarchal systems, people uh, and our ancestors actually lived in a matriarchal society. During the Paleolithic, there were great cults to the cave mother. In the Neolithic, uh, an outstanding flourishing of the earth goddesses. And in the Chalcolithic, the great solar goddess, most Europeans stopped worshipping gods and for a couple of hundreds of years began to worship a single solar goddess. And many Germanic tribes were devoted to 
a mother goddess, such as the example I gave you of the Lombards. Germanic tribes such as the Longobardi, Angli, Redini, Avione, Verini, Eudosse, Serini, Utone, etc. They all worshipped an earth goddess, a mother goddess. And let's not forget that amongst the Germanic tribes, the wife of the chieftain also played an important role, mostly linked to magical affairs. But her role was to know the outcome of events through divination and change the outcome with active magic, weaving the web of fate. And this is when it becomes interesting. Both Freya and obviously Frigg, for the reasons I've told you, are goddesses concerned with Seder, which is a Norse magical practice concerned with discerning destiny and altering its course by reweaving parts of it. Weaving and spinning is what Seder is all about, not just metaphorically, but physically doing it and through that act forcibly send out energy and the will of the practitioner towards something. Weaving and spinning, the words in Old Norse also refer to the act of attracting, pulling and pushing, as if working on cords, spiritual interactions constructed, uh, weaved to bend things to our will and our purposes. And one of the very few abilities of Frigg that Freya doesn't have is that Frigg spins the clouds, she weaves them. This is because Freya was connected to Seder, to magic, the act of weaving and spinning. But with Christianity, that was absolutely outlawed. Uh, magical practices were condemned by the church. So was the cult of Freya. Freya became Frigg, a goddess who was closer to the figure of the Virgin Mary, who lost all the magical attributes when Freya was transformed into Frigg. But weaving and spinning remained because the Christians failed to see that that trade, that activity was in fact highly used for magical purposes. But it seems such an innocent one, a woman's trade, not paying much attention to it. So why not the weaving and spinning remain linked to Frigg? After all, Frigg is a goddess who became associated with domestic affairs. So it seemed completely innocent letting Frigg remain linked to weaving and spinning. Christians unknowingly let this one pass and Frigg remained with an old magical activity when she was Freya. Frigg is the goddess of marriage, uh, she is the protector of the home and families, the goddess of the domestic activities, childbirth, uh, spinning and weaving, Many of her traits and attributes are the same as Freya's, as I've said, it's the same goddess. Even though on the next video I will delve much more on that aspect, I would like to say that one of the reasons why the same goddess was divided in two was because of the changes in old Germanic societies. All the Germanic peoples became more warlike with the passage of time, and the image of the Earth Goddess progressively became associated with other activities of the society which were no, no longer the main concerns. War was the activity through which wealth was acquired, new lands to farm and to settle, increasing of property and power, basically anything in a society was conquered by making war. So progressively Frigg, or Freya, ceased to be that important in Germanic societies. And magic, fertility, prosperity, etc. for many didn't make much sense because it was to the gods of war people had to worship if they wanted to continue to thrive. Freya, Frigg, was split in two goddesses. Freya for magical practices, fertility, wealth, love, sorcery, well, everything she was already associated with, and Frigg became solely the domestic goddess. Because in times of war, which was almost the entire year and year after year, people would go to war and leave behind their properties. If we take a look at Viking societies, which was precisely during that period that the same goddess started to be seen as two different deities, most properties were left in the care of women, taking care of the house, 
giving birth, taking care of the children, uh, the entire home industry and the importance of the family. All of this became associated with Frigg, which, on this line of thought, became a domestic goddess. And this conversion was actually very easy, I think, because Freya herself was the most worshipped goddess in Scandinavia, so much that she was also included in domestic cults, and there are many names for her, uh, many aspects of Freya related to domestic cults. So Frigg was just another aspect of the same goddess, but for household activities. Even knowing that Frigg and Freya are the same goddess, I, th I, I like to think that to our Norse ancestors, these were two aspects of the same deity, because many deities had different aspects for different purposes, and with time such aspects became different gods. What happened with Freya, being one goddess and then split in two, is the exact opposite of what happened with Odin when his cult was introduced in Northern Europe. Odin has many names, more than 100 names, because the cult of different local deities, native deities of Northern Europe, were syncretized into the cult of the same god, Odin, making him a god who ruled over all, uh, who had the attributes of many local deities, thus having different aspects. So I like to think that if the same goddess became two distinct ones, and Frigg became a totally different goddess, maybe it's not a problem at all for modern pagans to worship Frigg as a unique deity and Freya as another totally different goddess. So Frigg can often be called upon for protection of the family, for keeping family bonds strong and together, for safety in childbirth and for protection of children. She can be worshipped to bless weddings and married women, and to help married couples in general, and of course worshipped for a variety of domestic activities. Alright my dear friends, I hope you have enjoyed this video, and I, as I have said in the beginning, this video is also in honor of my grandmother who passed away recently. She lived to reach almost a hundred years, she even met her great-grandchildren, and one, one surprising thing, uh, interesting thing, is that she, she was my grandmother from my father's side, but my mother had the idea to make a gathering of family members in honor of my grandmother. So a lot of people came, we, we haven't seen each other for more than 15 years, and even people from, from other countries and from Germany, family members, came and it was just incredible. So in a way, as I have said, Frigg is a goddess that can be worshipped for uh, keeping the family bonds strong and together. So in a way we have honored both my grandmother and I think Frigg. <laughs> so maybe my grandmother is with Frigg right now, uh, which, which would be a good thing. Uh, old women's knowledge is always needed. So. Thank you so much for watching, see you on the next video, and as always, tá por aí lá!